Welcome back to another great episode of the Homegrown Hunter TV. I'm your host, Steve Elmy. On today's show, I'm gonna take to the field with some great friends of mine during the spring of the year after wild turkey. We're gonna show you some tips and techniques. We're gonna show you how we're setting up our ultimate highs as well as our ultimate lows. We're also gonna have Ashen on to show you one of her favorite recipes for cooking wild turkey. Stay tuned. Welcome to another great season of the Homegrown Hunter. Good girl. Homegrown Hunter TV is brought to you by Rackstacker, Canada's leader in big game attractants. Campbellford Chrysler, a small town dealer with a huge inventory. Huckabones Equipment, Ottawa Valley's Kubota dealer. Bishop Lake Outdoors, First Place Trailers, Altan Outdoor Solutions. Badlands Packs and Apparel, the original Portable Winch, Nature of Design Signs and Graphics, and these other fine sponsors. On our first hunt today, I'll be taking a buddy of mine out for a spring turkey hunt. I'm not going to mention any names, however I will explain later. I had roosted these two birds the night before and knew exactly where to set up. Absolutely everything had worked out as planned, or at least I thought so. You're likely wondering why there's no shots being taken. Well, it's kind of a screw up on my part for not telling my buddy what's going on. This week's tech tip is brought to you by Huckabones Equipment, Ottawa Valley's Kubota dealer. Here's a shot of the field that we're hunting. We'll be sitting in the fence line to the right, and with the topography between us and the birds that are roosted in these trees right here, we won't need a decoy. They won't see it anyways. The plan here was to call the birds after they left their roost, to call them up over this knoll in hopes to pull a double when they got within range. However, when the birds got within range, why was there no shooting? You see how thick this brush is? That became a big issue when swinging for a bird. I was facing this direction and being a right hand shooter I had this much room to shoot. My buddy was facing this way with minimal swing as he's a right handed shooter as well. From the ground you'll see the barrel of his gun. This is obviously from the camera angle and it's completely in a safe direction. But the birds were to his right. Look at the lower shrubs that are in his way. If he were facing the other direction, he would have had a shot at these two birds. As you can tell, we would have had plenty of time to put all this together. It's not hunting if you're not learning. From the sky again, this is how you would want to get set up. Right-handed shooters facing down the fence line with maximum amount of room to swing. We'll know this for next time. As for the rest of the hunt, we just had to watch the birds walk out of view with nothing but confusion on where the hens were. Oh. 
Oh yeah, they're definitely coming looking. We're now out hunting with Danny Bizonet of Longbeard Guide Services. A longtime friend and elite staff for Rack Stacker. No. <laughs> it's all James. Look at them. He's funny. Get your gun up on there right there. That's two James. And he's still coming right now. Oh, There's Tom's on the left. There's Tom's on the left. That morning we had set up an Altan platoon ground blind. There is more than enough room for four of us to be hunting from. The platoon is a great blind for many people. It works well with wheelchairs or even kids that want to go hunting with you. I don't like how my gun is sticking right up. Okay, that's good. That's good. They know where to go. The platoon also has large adjustable windows and shoot through mesh that doesn't affect the birds one bit. Danny had had this spot pre-scouted and knew that there was a lot of birds in this area. The guys had had three tags in their pockets to get filled, being later in the season, and we were not going to be picky on what was going to be shot at. Wait a second, did you just see that? It was at this point that I had realized that the second bird had flown to the right and the decoy wasn't going to fare out too well. Ready Steve? 
Hang on, hang on, let it focus. Hang on, hang on. Kill him. Kill him. <laughs> Just barely got him in screen. Did you get three? Two. No, someone blew my decoy off the stick. That might have been me. <laughs> Wrong for your baby. I don't know. Wait, I'm gonna what? try to pull that Tom in. I'm gonna tag it. There's two Toms, full strut right there. <laughs> That's yours, eh? What? That's your decoy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I knew that. Oh, He's no. like, don't worry about the decoy. <laughs> Shoot it. <laughs> Shoot. I'll buy you a new one. No, no. Here. I'm not worried about that. Is that a DSD? What is it? Uh, AV. AVNX? Oh, <laughs> Baby. It's on your pocket. No, it's Courtney. shot the decoy. It's up to you, boys. We just, yeah, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with that. Yep. It was time to head home and celebrate our success with good food and music. We are now going to share with you one of our favorite meals to have with wild turkey. Using one turkey breast, which feeds about four people, we like to cut them up into strips about a finger in length and around half inch thick. As you work your way through the breast, you'll want to take any bruised meat out and any remaining fat from the bird. This is a great meal for kids to make and it's a great way to get them involved in the kitchen. Once you get all this done, we're going to use one of our favorite batter recipes. Canola oil is what we often use for deep frying as it has great flavor, but vegetable oil will work just as good. You'll want to put this on medium heat while you prepare the batter. Coombs & Company is a Canadian batter that we're using. It comes in chipotle lime, garlic dill, and our favorite which we're going to use today, Canadian Classic. You'll want to put the batter in a separate bag and get yourself a few egg whites prepared. You will first dip the turkey strips into the batter, give them a shake, and then transfer to the egg whites. Mix it up good and then return them back to the batter and give it another good shake to cover the turkey well. Now it's time for the pan. Of course, being hot oil, be careful when cooking and placing in the meat. It'll take about five to six minutes for the meat to cook through and wait until they are golden brown. Using the Coombs & Company batter also works well for cheese sticks, mushroom caps, and deep fried pickles. Get creative. Serve this to some family and friends, and we assure you that everyone will be diving in for seconds. And now, this week's Cut to the Chase segment, brought to you by Rackstack. A little later in the show, you're going to see me wearing a Badlands turkey vest. This thing is fantastic in innovation. It's got lots of different features on it that I think everybody can benefit from. What I like about this vest personally is it's got lots of different pockets they've designed here. I use a pot call both for slate and glass, so it's nice to have two pot call locations. It's got an internal pocket on the right side for your strikers, so they're right there when you need them. It's also got a spot for your range finder. Up in the top part of the right chest, you'll see that there's a magnetic clip that actually holds all your mouth calls, so if you need something on the fly, you've got that readily available. 
There's a hidden pocket on both sides of the vest for gloves or a face mask if you need it. You can have everything stored in a good spot. On the left side, there's a spot for your box calls. There's also an additional pocket that I like to put granola bars and snacks in because it's going to be an early morning to start. It's fully adjustable. I'm a six foot, 180 pound guy. This is fully adjustable up on the shoulders and of course the waistline. If you're a well-rounded fella, that's nice to get the, the extra space there. So they've done a fantastic job. It's also got a hydration system that's on the back of it along the seat. So the seat itself has a heavy material on the bottom so you don't have to worry about destroying your seat. And it's a nice thick cushion as well so it's got lots of different comfort there. You can sit for many hours and especially if you're running and gunning turkeys like I like to do, this is the type of vest that you're going to be wanting to get into. I've got these available at rackstacker.ca. We've got lots available so check it out on our website with full details on what you could be looking for in this coming turkey season. Let's go back to the show. Closed captioning has been brought to you by the original portable winch. Compact, lightweight and can be carried anywhere. Now we'll be hunting the rack stacker farm for a late season turkey. Just gonna sneak up around the corner. The night before, while doing chores, I had spotted a lone gobbler in the middle of this sweet success field that we planted a week ago. I sent a message out to Tyrell and said we gotta get after him in the morning. Knowing that he was roosting quite a ways away, we had a bit of time to get set up in the morning. However, we were quite confident knowing he'd make his way back for an early feed. Nearing the end of May and the peak of our food plot season, I wasn't going to mess around. I had a tag in my pocket and the first gobbler to step out was going to get it. Yeah, brother. That was on film too. <laughs> yeah, brother. Tough season, man. Oh, yeah! I seen that bird last night. 
I was doing my chores before going to bed. 7.30 last night, come out here to get some grass for the cows. Just in that field right there, and that bird was in this field scratching. He took off on the run. I text Tyrell. I said, dude, let's get after a bird. I don't care if he's a Jake. I've had such a tough year. Oh man, I'm jacked because we expected him to come from this left side here. <laughs> and Zach kicks me in the back and says, to the right, <laughs> to the right. And I literally went like this and all I seen was redhead like seven yards. Oh! Oh yeah! Thank you, Henny Penny. Thanks for coming, Ty. You know, he is a Jake. I'm totally cool with that. A bird's a bird, in my opinion, and to each their own. But with that being said, the hunt was really fast. When you get an opportunity, check out the Badlands Turkey Vest. This vest is super handy. Everything is super close. Of course, my favorite thing, you don't want to be moving while you're turkey hunting. This is a really thick foam, and it's very comfortable to sit on. Of course, it's all protected with a heavy material on the back. Really great for hunting, especially running and gunning. We're going to cut this short right now because Ty and I are going to go after another bird. Thanks for joining us on the Homegrown Hunter TV. I'm your host, Steve Ellen. For past episodes, be sure to check out hghtv.ca. Until next time.